when you are fitting models to data, as we have here, so we have an estimated V0, and comparing this to an actual V0, a very useful way of looking at this is to carry out what's called a parity plot. And this is basically what you've already done in terms of looking at your existing data. So we go data analysis, regression, and we are regressing the estimated V0 over the actual values to produce what's called a parity plot. We have label, labels in the first row and we want residual plots, that's very important, and line fit plots. And we're okay to that. And this is the output that we get. So basically what we've done is we're comparing what we're expecting against what we actually have. So we're expecting a straight line of slope 1. And we have a correlation here, an adjusted R squared of 0.96. So 96% of the true variability was explained by the fitted data. It's pretty good. And we can also have a look at the value of the coefficient of V0, which should be at or close to 1, and it's 0 0.94. And we also have upper and lower confidence limits for this value. So the upper and lower limits actually include 1. So there's no reason to say that our fitted data is any different to the actual values. What it will also give us is a, two plots. One of the residuals, and you can see these are frowning slightly. And that's because when we go to look at the scatter plot of the expected over V0, I'll just change the chart type to scatter. We can see that we have these values here at high values of V0 where the assay was getting saturated and where we're not getting a clean relationship between the substrate and the activity. This happened in all the plots that we actually fitted. But it does actually give us an indication of where we might actually refine the analysis. So for example, if we actually use these points here, up to, for example, this point here, we might actually get a better fit to the data. And this also comes across in the residuals. These two points here are actually throwing the whole thing out. 